Welcome back to Education Matters. Did you correctly answer B? Adjusted for, I'm sorry, I'm sorry D, adjusted for, for inflation, funding for supplies and materials for per student is down 53% actually since 2008, 2009. Next up on the show, we're gonna introduce you to a great effort to help students get to college that started right here in North Carolina. And to tell us all about it is the founder of the College Advising Corps, Dr. Nicole Hurd. Dr. Hurd, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Keith. Now, I, I, have, I had you know, sort of heard by reputation about College Advising Corps, probably talked, maybe even met some folks who were involved in it, but I think the first time that I really dug into what you were doing was when you were uh, uh, recognized by uh, President Obama at the end of last year. Went to the White House for leadership, so congratulations on that. Um, so tell me, you're the founder and CEO. What were the origins of College Advising Corps, and sort of what what did you what were you doing? So what did the, what was the need that you saw that you, you were trying to fill? Well, the need we saw was basically our counselor student ratio, which will probably shock everybody, is about 490 to one, which means every counselor has a caseload of 490 students that they're helping propel forward, whether that be testing, whether that be psychological issues, whether that be all the things that happen to a teenager. Um, and they also have a caseload that is supposed to propel kids towards higher education. And so the idea is, how is this ratio possible? Um, and we need a North Carolina that's going to be competitive. So how do we make sure all of our students kind of get that higher education experience? Um, and we can't navigate that when those caseloads are that high. Um, and then we married it with what I think is really important, near peer advising. So we had all these great, amazing recent graduates coming out of places like Carolina and Duke and Davidson and NC State. And so what we've done is harness those recent graduates, give them their first job is to go into a school and help those counselors, be side by side with those counselors, hold those counselors' hands together, and then most importantly, hold our parents' and students' hands together and propel everybody into a higher education opportunity. Right, that, well, that, that 490 students for every one, I mean, that's, that's, right. a, that, that's ridiculous and, that's right. and kind of shocking, but I've seen it. I mean, I've got, a, I've got a daughter who's a senior in high school, and at least my experience, and frankly, it almost it dates back to when I was in, in high school, the, the, the counselors are focused primarily on the kids who are already planning to go to college and sort of maybe know a fair amount about how to navigate this. That's one of the things that your program was trying to address, right, is that uh, all the other kids who either um, aren't sure or maybe they want to go, but they have, you know, they're coming from a family with, uh, without college graduates. They have no experience in dealing with all the, I mean, frankly, just the right. forms and the paperwork. It's hard, for, it's hard for me, and I went to college and went through the whole college scholarship stuff. So talk to me about that. Well, I think, you know, we recognize our counselors are heroes. They're absolutely the unsung heroes and heroines um, of our secondary school. Um, system in terms of just their caseload and what they're trying to do and really, like I said, making sure every student has an opportunity. I think for us, our goal is to make sure, especially our first generation students uh, here in North Carolina, our rural students, our underrepresented students, all have that opportunity. And again, this is so difficult. Um, it's so complex when you think about financial aid and filling out a FAFSA form, when you think about applications and making sure you really go to a match and fit school, a school that's gonna serve you well. And we want everybody to go. So whether it's, and when I say college, I mean it in a very large way. So whether that's a vocational opportunity, whether that's a community college, whether that's a four-year degree, the idea is how are we going to make your dreams come true together? Um, you're North Carolina, 67% of the jobs in the state in the next 10 years are gonna require some kind of post-secondary right. education. Um, so, like I said, this is absolutely about um, creating lifetime learning, but it's also about creating a workforce that's going to make North Carolina and, frankly, the whole United States more competitive. And and, and it's sort of, like you said, it's the accessibility, and, and, it, and, and maybe some viewers don't think, I mean, it really is sometimes that, as you mentioned, having these so these recent college graduates working with students, so they've just been through it themselves, so they're... They're, they're peers, or they're very close to the same age, but they can walk them through it because it is, um, you know, a lot of, they just don't know how to access it. And, and really, even we hear about rising cost of college, it is still accessible. I mean, there are still ways, particularly when you're talking about um, low-income backgrounds, there's more um, opportunities. In fact, most scholarships now are need-based. So it is, uh, so they, it, it is basically sitting down with them and working through the process. Well, and it's still the best investment anybody's going to make in themselves. I mean, the reality is we think about houses and cars and ways we take out loans and mortgages. Your higher education investment is by far the most, is going to have the best return on investment than any investment you're going to make, especially if you go to a school, like I said, where there's the right match and fit and you'll have a meaningful credential. And so our job is for parents not to have sticker shock, um, but to see there's this thing called net price to get rid of some of this higher ed jargon, frankly, and make it very accessible. Most of our low income students are not going to pay anything close to what they're seeing on a website. Um, most of our students are going to get very, very um, important aid, and they're also going to be able to really make different life choices if we give 
them the opportunity to, to pursue this post-secondary education. So again, I think it's really about making something that seems scary to all of us all of a sudden become not only tangible, but really propel you forward um, so your dreams can come true. So, so born here in North Carolina, the program. Um, mm -hmm. But you, So tell me, I guess, as we sort of get near the, you know, sort of wrap up here in, in, the, in the conversation, how does it uh, look now in North Carolina and, and you're, um, you're national? We're national. So we, um, we're actually in Virginia um, and other parts of the South. We're out in California. I'm actually about to get on a plane to go to Boston where we're every school in Boston's high schools. We're um, in New York. We're about to be in 50 high schools in New York. So 600 plus high schools across the country will be serving about 200,000 students this year. Um, but the exciting thing about North Carolina is we'll be in 127 high schools here in North Carolina. Um, again, this is one of those places where we think uh, North Carolina is an example for all other states. And if we can saturate this state, this very much aligns with President Spellings and her push for more rural and low-income students going to UNC system schools. We've got great leadership here in higher education and in K through 12, really believing in our students. And we want to make sure parents and students now have the materials they need to, to really access that higher education. Well, it's, it's fantastic. And I, and I should want to should point out that I know you recently got a, a wonderfully generous gift from from the uh, John M. Belk Endowment, $10 million. Um, uh, they're all, and I should also, in, in interest of disclosure, John M. Belk Endowment is also a friend of the Public School Forum, and, but uh, they're a great organization that, like you, are also investing in making college more accessible in North Carolina. So, so thank you for what you're doing. Um, we'll have uh, links on our website um, on the show about how to find out more about it, including if you want to get involved as to be a core member, right? That's right. Great. Right. Thanks so much, Dr. Hurd. Thank you. After the break, this week's Leadership Spotlight. 